Remember a few years ago during a televised program called Revolt Summit, when rapper T.I. and Candace Owens were invited to sit on the panel to discuss the plight of black America and the two constantly debated? The powers that be often invites black celebrities that are underqualified to do so to sit upon national televised panels to discuss the plight of black America. It's actually a suppression tactic that prevents black liberation. White oppressive forces controls who sits upon these televised panel by only financially sponsoring or televising shows with black speakers that they approve of. They then either directly invite or approve of the invitations of underqualified black entertainers and self-loathing blacks like Candace Owens to speak on these televised panels and summits. This limits the spectrum of dialogue to merely opinions, but allows for a lively debate with a low level spectrum. It's how white oppressive force ensures that black liberating dialogue remains dumbed down and non-productive. The white society no longer provides national media platform to those black Americans that speaks of true liberation. There is in fact a list of black people that are banned from being given national media platforms within the white controlled media. White oppressive forces realized that it was by providing a national media platform to Dr. King and Malcolm X that their popularities and followers grew. They therefore now prevents the rise of new black, a black messiah figure, as they called it, by denying national media platforms from those among us that have a potential of becoming a true national black leader. And they provide media platforms to only their puppet leaders. Many African Americans have been misled to believe that black men like Malcolm X and Dr. King were rare anomalies that no longer exist among our ranks. But this is totally untrue but it's precisely what we're supposed to be misled to believe. The truth is that those types of black people that are serious about black liberation are no longer given a national media platforms, out of sight, out of mind. Nowadays, the white establishment literally treats those black people with true revolutionary minds as a gardener treats weeds within his garden. A gardener doesn't want weeds spreading throughout his garden, so he denies of water and fertilizers. This prevents it from growing and spreading throughout his garden. Likewise, the white establishment doesn't want the ideology of true black liberation growing and spreading through its garden of white supremacy. So now they deny a national platform to those who, who presents it to prevent the ideology from growing and spreading. Today, black leaders are selected and controlled by the ruling white elites. They do so by controlling who they will allow to speak before a national platform within their white control media. If these black people do not cooperate and do the bidding of the white ruling elites, they won't be given any airtime within the national media. The elites found that giving media attention to those black people who speak truth, truth to power works to the detriment of the white establishment. In reality, there are still many black people among our ranks with the capability of Malcolm and Martin. However, these black people are no longer given any media attention because the white establishment doesn't want their ideology, the ideology to spread among the black masses, thus disrupting their system of white supremacy. They falsely justify doing so by labeling the, labeling the black ideology of, uh, of liberation as being anti-white rhetoric, militant. They claim that the ideology breeds hatred and dissent amongst the black masses. They therefore treat the ideology of black liberation, as I said, as a weed in a garden. But the reason why they're doing it is to protect their system of white supremacy. This is also why content like mines are so heavily shadow banned. 
The true reason it's being done is to protect the system of white supremacy. They don't want any more unified black protests like what we achieved during the 1960s. They don't want it ever happening again. As a result of this system that removes di um, the, the dialogue of black liberation from the national consciousness of black people, most black people no longer yearn for black liberation. Most instead yearn only for a comfortable position within the system of white supremacy. In fact, the minds of some black people have been so distorted that many, many openly said, I don't want to hear that black liberation shit. Get out here with that. This was achieved by constantly inundating the black population with so much black racially demoralizing propaganda about ourselves until many began to doubt our ability to govern ourselves and believe that we therefore need white people to govern over our lives. Moreover, that many believe that we're better off living under white dominance, dominance and therefore have abandoned all hopes of ever liberating ourselves. This is how they program our minds. As long as they keep our minds within this collective state, the white society can then rule over black people forever. This system was implemented in response to the 1960s unprecedented unified black protests. It was, it was deployed to ensure that it never happens again. Through this nefarious mass manipulation system, the system of white supremacy now strives and operates like a well-oiled machine. Black people, we will never liberate ourselves using outdated foot march strategies against modern white racism. We must elevate our tactics to match the sophisticated tactics that are being presently used against us. It's why we must elevate our minds above a biblical fairy tale and a silly slave syndrome myth. When we attempt to confront this sophisticated oppression system, relying on an urban myth and a biblical fairy tale, we are in fact making damn fools of ourselves. You know, many African-Americans often ask the questions, how come we no longer have national leaders like Dr. King and Malcolm X? But they're asking the wrong question. What they should be asking is who benefits most by the fact that we no longer have national leaders like Dr. King and Malcolm X? The answer is, in fact, the white establishment does. The government has a historical incentive for not wanting to have another um, outspoken, articulate African-American leader who is truly about liberation reach into the to the level of influence and prominence as Dr. King had reached. They deemed him as being a threat of the national interest. FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover and his top senior aide, um, William Sullivan, said that Dr. King had become too influential and therefore too powerful, and they labeled him as being a threat to the nation. Hoover also said that the unification of the American Negro was the greatest threat against the future of the nation. Therefore, the, the government now benefits when there's no new black leader that rise to the, uh, the, the uh, level that Dr. King reached with the ability to unify the masses. They benefit from this condition, from, from our condition. Whenever an outcome happens amongst the oppressed that benefits the oppressors, it is by design of the oppressors. Brothers and sisters, it's time to wake up. Those black people who do not critically think never notices their mental chains. It is time to wake up to our reality. There are a lot of people out there whose job is trying to keep your mind dumbed down and distracted. You have to critically think. Wake up. One love and peace.